What is going on, people? Leah here from Creative Tech Lab. Today, we're here to talk about this amazing thing right here, the Sony A6400, my favorite APS-C camera. We're gonna talk how to set up video settings, so let's get into it. First and foremost, welcome. This is Creative Tech Lab. My name is Leo. Nice to see your face, well, not really see your face because I can't really see you but I imagine that you are a beautiful person on that side for clicking on this video I appreciate it talk a lot about run and gun videography here on the channel so if you're into that kind of thing stick around anyway Sony a6400 you took it out the box you're ready to set it up but you're not exactly sure how to set it up that's what we're going to talk about here primarily I'm going to talk about my video settings I primarily use my cameras to shoot video and a little bit of stills but I shoot a lot of talking head stuff like this interviews travel videos some small commercial work as well as those cinematic b-roll shots where you're moving the camera all over the place so that's what i have my camera mainly set up for if you're into any of those kind of things and i think you like this video so let's get into it but one thing before we jump straight into the settings and everything that we have here i do want to say in the interest of time this video will be a little bit longer so i'm going to try and go as fast as possible if you feel like i went through something too fast i'll drop timestamps with a little bit more details down at the bottom so you could skip ahead or skip back if you need to as we go along okay cool so i reset the camera so i'm setting it up like i'm setting it up for the first time so let's jump into things here so the first thing that we want to do is we want to set the camera to movie mode because the things that we're doing are based on video so we want to have the camera set up in the mode for the dials that we're doing all right first thing we want to go here we're going to hit menu and we're going to go to the second folder and we're going to go to exposure mode and we are going to change that to manual because we want full control over our exposure settings in terms of our aperture iso and all that we want to control that so set to manual next we're going to come down here and i'm going to set up my frame rates so the first thing to do there is go into file format and i'm going to go to xa vcs 4k because the main thing that i do there is 4k and then 24 frames per second but i'm going to change that to 100 megabits per second because i want the highest quality file so that we could color grade it when it is that we're getting into things 24 frames per second is my main frame rate anything that i'm shooting that has talking or that's supposed to show live action is shoot at 24 frames per second for me i do utilize other frame rates for b-roll like 120p 60p whatever we're getting to how to switch in between frame rates after it is that we set up all the video custom buttons there so next page has a lot of our autofocus stuff that i want to change here i have my drive speed Speed set to fast and I have the tracking sets are set to responsive now that's just how I have mine set up there on autofocus typically when I'm in an autofocus scenario I might be moving the camera around travel videos when you're vlogging or when you're saying stuff and you're out and about and you're whipping the camera around you want it to move fast one note I want to make though there if you are using autofocus let's say to pull focus like you would with the touch sensitivity or whatever you would want to change those settings to either be standard or you might want the speed to move a little bit slower than having it being fast and responsive so that's something to play around with there audio recording on audio record level we're going to bump that down to seven seven is a good spot to have when you're using an external microphone i utilize the smaller microphones either from rode or movo link up here to a video that i did comparing those two microphones if you want to see that but that's where i have it set there and then on the next page we have audio level display we set that to on there so that we could see the meters when the camera is recording so you could see if you need to turn it up or turn it down if you're peaking or if your audio level is too low wind noise reduction we have set to off i want the camera to record everything that it hears and then if i need to cut something out in post i go ahead and do that that's just true of anything when you're recording you want to record everything and then if you need to cut something out you could do it that's just good creative discipline there then let's see here movie with shutter we're gonna set that to on that allows you to use this top button here to start a recording when you're in movie mode rather than having to fight to press this small button here on the side which you always miss if you've never set up that camera before you miss it more times than often so movie with shutter there is super helpful next couple pages over so we get to page five there the next thing we're going to change is 
zoom setting. So we are going to change that to clear image zoom. This is one of the most useful Sony features on the Sony Alpha line of cameras. What it does is it crops into the sensor and pretty much gives you a zoom with little to no quality loss. I did a full video on it up here if you want to check it out, but basically it gives you way more than whatever your actual focal length is. All right, next page over, we're gonna talk about our zebra settings. I have my zebra display on so I can see when I'm peeking and I have my zebra level set to 100. You can kind of play around this in between 95 and 100 is a good place to be to see if it is that you are clipping. It kind of depends on what picture profile you're using in terms of dynamic range and the situation that you're in. But 100 is a good spot for me. But like I said, between 95 and 100 is a good spot to be there on the zebra levels. Grid lines, we are going to set that to on. I have mine set to diagonal and square grid. And what that enables is just, instead of just the basic rule of the thirds, with the diagonal lines and the square grid, it kind of give you a couple different more points in terms of composing a shot. Composition is still something that I am working on every single day to get better. If it is that you just like rule of thirds, that's completely fine as well too, but I do like the grid lines being on there so you could see the different lines of intersection on the screen where you want to compose a shot there. All right, so scroll over to page eight here and we get to custom keys. This is where the camera comes to life. This is the meat and potatoes of this video. See, when you're doing your research before you bought your camera, you probably heard a lot about how bad the Sony menu system was. It's not 100% wrong, it's a little bit overblown. However, once it is that you set up your custom keys and you map a button for everything that you use frequently, you won't have to spend time fumbling and bumbling around in the menu system because you have a button for everything. So, buttons that we do have here on the camera, we have a custom button up here, C1. We have the trash button with the C2. These three buttons on the dial are programmable. We can also do this one right here two times, depending on whether you toggle it up or down, and as well as this middle button here. So let's set that up here and then we'll show you how we have mine set up for video. One thing I do want to make clear though, I'm mainly setting this up for video. So my custom keys follow for both photo and video. However, if you're a true hybrid shooter and you're doing things completely different on the photo side than you're on the video, then you would want to set this up in just the video settings and then set up different custom keys mapped for your photo settings. But this is how I have mine set up here. So the first thing we're gonna go into here, we're gonna scroll over to page four and we're gonna change the top button here to AFMF toggle. That enables me to toggle on and off my autofocus there. Sometimes you really need to nail focus and you can't depend on the autofocus. So that's a quick way to just toggle it off there. The next thing we're gonna have here is the second button. I am going to come in here and scroll over to page 13 and change that to the focus magnifier. When it is that I am really trying to nail focus, instead of using focus peaking assist or something like that, I just use the magnifier to dial in on what it is that I'm looking at, set my focus, dial back out, and then we have a good look at what I'm doing there. So I have those two things because I use them a lot map to key buttons there. And then C2, which is the trash button, is set to white balance. That's how it comes. We don't need to change that there. White balance is really important. I use auto white balance a lot when it is that I'm vlogging, but when it is that I really need to dial into something and I'm looking at something where the scene isn't changing too much, make sure you nail your white balance. It will completely change your footage to get the white balance nailed in just perfectly. Next, there is the buttons on the dial that we said there. So the dial itself is already set to change the subject shutter when it is that you turn it. However, we're gonna to go to the left one first. Gonna skip the first one and go to the left one first. I have that, scroll over to page nine. I have that set to picture profile because depending on my scene when I'm out running and gunning, if it changes and it's too contrasty, I might wanna change my picture profile. HLG is my favorite picture profile. I use that a lot. That's what I'm shooting it right now. However, if it's a scene that calls for a lot of dynamic range, I will switch to S-Log2. Or I also have a couple different custom profiles, one from Josh Yeo for a low light and another one from EOS HD or at least somebody that was mimicking that online to give you Canon colors. So I do play around a lot with different picture profiles depending on what situation I'm in. So that's mapped to the middle button there and then 
the right side of the dial, that button is set to ISO stock. We just leave that there because we do need a button to control our ISO there. So I'll leave that where it is. The bottom button there, which is bottom four, we're gonna change that one here. We're gonna come over to page 12 and set that to audio record level. Like we mentioned before, we do have the meter up on the screen there that displays on. So if you do see that you're peaking or if the audio is coming in too low, you have a button here. You could quickly just change the audio settings there depending on what you're recording. All right, scroll one more page over and the last button we have to set here is the main button, the C1 button as a custom button there. I'm gonna come here and scroll over to page 17 and I'm gonna set that to zoom. The clear image zoom feature that we set up before is set to that button there. So as I mentioned, Sig Sigma 16 millimeter awesome lens, fixed lens is the lens I have on the camera most of the time. If I do need to punch in on something or zoom in on something, I could just hit this button right here and zoom up to 1.5 times in 4K or two times in HD. Super, super helpful there. So that's mapped to this button. And then if you come out here and you look at the fourth page, you will see that there is one more thing to map onto a custom button if you did have one of those custom buttons on the lens. I don't have any APS-C lenses that actually have a custom button there. So right now it's set to focus hole, but if I did have, if I do eventually get a lens that fits onto this camera, maybe I'll change it to something else. All right, one more thing. We do wanna change a few things in the function button. So when you press the FN button right here, it pulls up this little screen and it's another quick way to get to some things. Some of the things are a little bit redundant. However, I'm gonna change my interval um, shooting here where the ISO was, because I always have ISO right here. I don't need it. White balance, I don't need. What I'm gonna change that to is gamma display assist we already have there and everything else there is what you need it to be. And whoo. So that was a lot, but that is it. Hopefully this was not too long. Hopefully you gained something from this video. At least it should have given you some insight on how to set up your camera for video. If this video helped you out in any way, shape or form, please go ahead, drop it a like, share it with your other Sony Alpha friends as that helps us out a lot here on the channel and enable us to make more content. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button if you're into Sony cameras. There's already a bunch of videos on the A6400 with a lot more to come as well as other Sony cameras as well and other disciplines. So if you're into creativity just as a whole, this is the place you want to be. I want to thank you for rocking with me for this long and I will see you in the next video. Peace.